When I was in Vietnam for the GOC, that's the Galax Overclocking Carnival, I couldn't help but notice the new designs of RTX cards that Galax was bringing to the market. And in particular, the RTX 2070 EXOC caught my eye. Now, of course, there has been controversy with pretty much every RTX card that has been released so far. Uh, in particular, in Australia, I've liked the 2070 the most out of the bunch, even with the release of the RTX 2060, which I think in the US is probably hitting the best out of the RTX 2000 series in terms of value for money, which you haven't seen already. I'll put the link up here for the review. Uh, but in Australia, the RTX 2070 is, in my opinion, the better play, not just in terms of having more performance than the RTX 2060, but also better value for money, coming in currently at around 700 and 50 Aussie dollars. And in Europe, I believe they call this the KFA2. We should also do a good job of coming in the lower end of the pricing of RTX 2070 cards. But of course, the question remains, does this card live up to its name? Does it perform well whilst providing that value? Well, today we're gonna to put it on the test bench and we're also gonna be comparing it to the likes of the RTX 2070, 2080, 2080 Ti from Aorus, as well as comparing it to a 1080 Ti too. So what are we waiting for? Let's get this thing on the test bench and see what it can do. So I just spent some quality time with this RTX 2070 graphics card right here, testing out things like the thermals, acoustics, and also the fan speeds themselves. So what we had here, I'll throw up a graph for you guys. This was while it was overclocked as well. And another thing I've been testing recently is in hotter ambient temperatures. So the ambient temperature in here is 28 degrees at the moment. And this cooler uh, performed phenomenally well. 60% uh, fan speeds is, uh, just like the RTX 2060 review I did recently, seems like it's the sweet spot, uh, not just uh, out of the box, but also if you want to overclock as well. So overclocked, uh, we're getting 44 decibels of noise and 67 degrees of temperature. Now the auto fan speeds ironically came in at 59% and that got a little bit quieter at 43 decibels, one decibel quieter, but also one degree hotter. And that's because the PWM itself starts fluctuating a little bit. You're not staying at a constant 59%. You're actually fluctuating a little bit, staying under the magic number of 70 degrees. Uh, but also looking at 80%, things start to get a lot louder, a lot quicker, 61 degrees temperatures max. And then 100%, the fan speeds are simply unbearable. You get uh, 60 decibels in noise, uh, but you do get a good temperature of 58 degrees. So really only 30 degrees above load at 28 degrees ambience. But one thing to mention that this cooler is going through the extra features they've put on board, They've instead used uh, 100 mil fans this time around. And as we saw with those thermals, they're doing a great job of keeping this graphics card cool, but also quiet as well with that magical 60% fan speed. At the rear of the card, they've included three display port outs, HDMI 2.0 and a USB type C as well. Measuring up the card in terms of length, you've got 285 millimeters that you'll need for clearance if you wish to mount this in your case. You require an eight and six pin connector, as well as having RGB on the side and on the front, which you can change with the Extreme Tuner software. I couldn't find anywhere in the NVIDIA GeForce to turn these LEDs off, uh, but with the software itself, you can download it. It looks pretty simple and pretty polished. I was impressed. Uh, you do get an extra 25 millivolts extra headroom to play with with overclocks as opposed to MSI Afterburner, which only has the 100 millivolt. Uh, but you also get a power limit of 111%, which on an RTX 2070, especially a value proposition like this one, is actually not a bad thing. Now, actually one of the coolest features as you can see right beside me here is the complete silence of the graphics card. Unless you're loading up video games and putting a strain on this graphics card, then it will stay quiet. However, the cool thing in the Extreme Tuner software is that you can individually control the fans. So if you only want one of the fans going, you can do that. I mean, the practicality of it isn't really there, but it's just one cool thing that I noticed in the software. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna get back to testing and finishing up the rest of the test with these graphics cards around here at 1440p ultra wide, then come back with some solid scores and we can present a conclusion for the RTX 2070.
So we just finished up doing all the benchmarks and the RTX 2070 EXOC managed to overclock an extra 140 megahertz on the core. And then on the memory, we got a whopping 830 megahertz. This led the effective speeds on the memory about 15.6 gigahertz. And then on the core clock itself, we got around 2.07 gigahertz on that. This enabled it in the benchmarks and we'll throw up some numbers for you here with Shadows of the Tomb Raider first. Uh, to score pretty high. Now I tested at 1440p ultra wide for you guys and the numbers were very impressive coming out of this graphics card. It was slightly edging out the Aorus 2070 and that has a pretty big cooler on it. So what this proves is that this card and the cooler that Galax have implemented are perfectly fine for handling a 2070 both out of the box and even during summer heat when it's overclocked. But ultimately what we see with the numbers here is that the 2080 Ti, that's in another league both in performance, but also price. And then the 2080 is coming out ahead of even an overclocked 2070, and that's coming out ahead of a 1080 Ti. And that's actually coming close to the 1080 Ti, which is then well ahead of the 1080. Moving on to the next game we're pulling up here is Far Cry 5, a little bit in favor of the previous generation cards in comparison to other games, uh, but still showing a difference there with the 2080 kind of matching the 1080 Ti, 2080 Ti pulling ahead. Uh, but this resolution is definitely a sweet spot for all these cards in terms of maxing out the performance, except for one title. And we'll pull that out next. That is Rainbow Six Siege, where in the case of the RTX 2080 Ti, that's starting to get a little bit CPU bound. So the other scores here are starting to push a little bit closer to that graphics card. But the 2070 EXOC is edging out the 2070 Aorus ever so slightly in some of these titles. It's a very close battle, but that's ultimately because it comes with higher clocks out of the box, but also when it's overclocked too. Now the next title we're pulling up here is Hitman 2, and a very similar trend is following with all the graphics cards being where they should be, and those 2070s coming very close to one another, uh, but still showing that this card when it's overclocked can get some pretty close numbers to that of not just the 1080 Ti, but also the 2080 itself. And then moving on to the last title here, we've got Battlefield 5, where at 1440p ultra wide, with ultra settings on max here, we saw that this card was performing very well, getting over 80 FPS, but if you were to drop the settings down to high with this graphics card with a 1440p ultra wide monitor, you'd be having a great gaming experience at 100 hertz with this graphics card being able to push those frame rates. And to be honest, high and ultra settings, I love playing on high. You're able to extract extra frame rates without taking pretty much any of a hit to the visual fidelity in the game itself. They're running through some of the synthetics for you guys. 3D Mark Fire Strike shows that the 2080 Ti is pulling well ahead of the other cards here, but the 2080 and the 1080 Ti coming very close and then the 2070 beating the 1080. Uh, both overclocked and out of the box. Uh, but moving on now to the power consumption figures because these pretty much relate to those scores that you saw before uh, with 3D Mark Fire Strike, just changing things to watts where the 2080 Ti is using the most power here. But the 2070 EXOC, it is doing pretty well. There's nothing outstanding about its power consumption, but it's not that bad either. Uh, you would like to have a good 500 watt power supply running this thing day in, day out. But then the last synthetic we're gonna pull up for you guys is Time Spy Extreme, where the RTX series cards do better in relation to 3D Mark Fire Strike than their 10 series counterparts. And so we saw here that the 2070 is edging closer to that 1080 Ti, it's actually very close. And then the 2080 and the 2080 Ti pull well ahead in this benchmark. But something crazy happened with the 2080 Ti. Speaking of that, this Aorus card here it's my first time running into an artifacting card. You've heard stories on the web of cards failing, having problems. This card started to exhibit that artifacting behavior on stock out of the box settings. And I've heard rumors about what it could be. I've spoken to other people in the industry. I've spoken to confirmed sources about different things. So I may be making a dedicated video onto what I think exactly is the problem with the higher failure rates on some of these higher end RTX cards because I was able to fix it like relatively quickly. It was nothing at all um, in terms of fixing it. So stay tuned for a video on that. That was actually very interesting, something to come out of this. But anyway, back to this Gravis card right here, the EXOC from Galax. And this thing, I mean, Galax know what they're doing. The 10 series cards that all came through here on the channel 
I was impressed with every single one of them, whether it was a value for money play like this one here, or it was the Hall of Fame that just went absolutely over the clouds and hit every single mark, but also costed a premium. This one right here just sticks true to that package of delivering good value for money in that graphics card segment. I think it's going for 760 Aussie dollars of retail at the moment, but if you can pick this thing up on eBay, for example, the 20% off sales, it's gonna be a really good buy. I'm actually personally waiting for some of those sales so I can pick up a few of these myself, but this card, it's got it all. It does it all. Acoustics, thermals, overclocks, and it overclocked quite well, at least the sample we had here. It's got the RGB bling. It's got good display options at the back. It's got great software support, very simple, very easy to use. But I guess there's not much else to say except Galax really know what they're doing when it comes to making a graphics card. And as we said with the GOC, the Galax Overclocking Carnival, one of the uh, hardcore overclockers who actually competes in world competitions, MAD, he's actually on the Galax design team. So that's awesome when they've got a pro overclocker designing these cards personally. So that's the Galax Touch, and I'm really impressed with this graphics card. Can definitely recommend it to you guys out there in the audience if you're thinking of getting one, whether it be the Galax branding or the KFA2, they're essentially the same company, just Galax have to rebrand their company in Europe due to trademark issues. But anyway guys, that's that. I don't know about America and the availability. I'm told these will be coming out in America on the Galax store. Uh, when they hit there, I'll update the description for you guys. But you can currently get them in Australia for a pretty good price. And that's about it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button, but also let us know in the comments section below what you think of the EXOC. I mean, the sample I got here, it just looks amazing. That's just my personal opinion on it. I really like what they've done with it. The RGB is not too in your face and you can turn it off if you wish to. You've also, of course, with the RTX series, got the ray tracing and DLSS support. Uh, so if you wish to use those in games, uh, then good luck. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Also, if you want to see the inside scoop before it hits YouTube's loop, then be sure to check us out on Instagram, Tech Yes City. And if you enjoy these videos coming in day in, day out, then you may wish to consider subscribing by hitting that sub button and turning the notifications on if you want to see the videos the moment they drop. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.